Good morning, everyone. So today I want to move on from functionalism and talk a little bit about conflict theory. Uh, but before jumping into conflict theory, I want to hit on a short recap of what functionalism is and just what I talked about a little bit yesterday. So yesterday uh, we hit on functionalism and if we remember functionalism focuses a lot on the institutions within society and how they create a complex system in order to create stability for that society. So some examples of the institutions that I gave yesterday were the healthcare institution, and we can relate that back to today's society within the COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, we still have nurses and doctors who are treating people who have confirmed cases of the coronavirus or COVID-19, and then they're also testing people who could potentially have the virus as well. Or you could have looked at how people within the medical field or the healthcare field are trying to create a vaccine for the COVID-19 for COVID-19 or the coronavirus in order to significantly decrease the spread of the virus. Next, I, I mentioned the government. And then within this institution, we've seen a lot of, you know, when it comes to the self-quarantine or the social distancing uh, orders that the government has put out in order to once again try to limit the spread of the coronavirus so that we can you know, get back to some form of normalcy within society as soon as possible. And then lastly, I mentioned schools and how schools are trying or are moving towards or are actually doing e-learning in order to still ensure that students are learning during this time, even though that students are not actually in the physical school building. So those are just three examples. Uh, in no way are those the only examples that you should look at. If you can come, if you can find another one and talk about it in your paragraph, that is awesome and I highly encourage it. But if not, once again, perfectly fine that you use those three examples. Uh, so moving on from functionalism, now jumping into conflict theory. So conflict theory focuses a lot on the power dynamic between two separate groups. One usually who has the power or is the dominant group and you find the other one being non-dominant, more of the working class group. So it's a constant struggle between these two groups in order to find, you know, create some sort of, you know, power between each. So if you're in the power, if you're in the power group, you want to, you want to, you know, maintain that power over the non-dominant group. And if you're in the non-dominant group, you're trying to find any means possible of trying to gain some power for yourself. So when we relate this back to the coronavirus in today's society, we can look at different, different companies or businesses and how they're interacting with their workers or, you know, are they, you know, some companies have had to lay off their workers during this time, or some companies have you know, allowed their workers to work from home. But that's not the case for every company. Some companies and some organizations are still having their workers come to work during this time, even though that we've seen many states still enact, you know, some form of self-quarantine or some form of social distancing. There's an article in this in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that hits on a little bit about the Los Angeles Rams new stadium. And when it comes to the workers still having to go to work and still continue construction during this time. So that's an example you could potentially look at uh, and then try to relate that back to this idea of this power dynamic struggle between a dominant group and the non-dominant group. Uh, another example when we look at, you know, when we relate back to government. So not all states have, have you know, followed this self-quarantine uh, order as strictly as other states. So you see a difference between such as like Missouri and California or Mississippi and New York. So that could be another potential, uh, our, uh, another potential area that you can look to apply conflict theory to the COVID-19 pandemic within the nation. And then one other example, when we relate back to schools and e-learning, obviously, you know, when you're not able to go to school, schools have to make a change. So when it comes to e-learning, that's pretty much the main way that schools are going to have their students learn or have their teachers teach. But what's the issue? The issue is that some, some students or a lot of students don't have access to the internet. So what, how can that be an example of this struggle between a more, you know, so much as a dominant group when you talk about schools and the non-dominant group when you talk to students that don't have access to the internet and how that relationship applies to what is going on in today's society with the COVID-19 pandemic.
pandemic. So once again, those are just a few examples In no way do you have to apply those or use those as examples within your paragraph uh, for the assignment. Uh, I, once again, I highly encourage you, if you can find a different way, I will provide uh, a video, uh, an instructional video that talks a little bit more about, uh, the con about conflict theory. And then I'll post some slides as well um, as further instructional material or further instructional aids as well. Uh, once again, make sure that you let Mr. Reinhold know what times were best for you if we were to go into like a Zoom meeting or a Zoom presentation for you as well, or a Google Hangout. So once again, stay safe, keep the social distancing, self-quarantine, try to stay active as much as possible. And uh, I will present another video for symbolic interactionism on Monday. So see you later.